Welcome to this week's Schlagbite for the week, January 11th, 2016, entitled New Year Old Disgrace. Just before the New Year, police in Phoenix found the body of an unidentified woman sitting on a couch, ceremonially enshrined in towels. The corpse had been there for days, and almost immediately, the suspect was found. A 39-year-old, seriously mentally ill woman who insisted that the body was her own. There are lots of chronically mentally ill people on the streets and in prisons in every city in America, because the seriously disturbed have been shamefully neglected, abandoned, and untreated. We got into this position in the 1960s and 70s, when there was a concerted effort to deinstitutionalize the chronically mentally ill. It was a noble idea close down the medieval block wards of state hospitals and get people back into the community where they could be supported and followed. The result has been that over the last 50 years, the number of psychi psychiatric beds in this country has shrunk from 650,000 to 65,000. The most seriously disturbed patients have wound up in the streets and incarcerated. The police have become the first responders for the chronically mentally ill. Why is this? Well, the answers are in a recent report by Dr. E. Fuller Torrey and colleagues entitled Fraud, Theft, Waste, and Private Profits, The Fate of Money Intended to Treat People with Serious Mental Illness. And the evidence shows that Billions of dollars allocated by the states to provide mental health services for the chronically mentally ill have been siphoned off by fraud, theft, and private profits. Tory estimates that between 6 and 10 percent of his state's mental health funds, which amounts to 4 to 8 billion dollars a year, are being lost to fraud, most to excess profits taken by for-profit managed care companies. Administrative costs in for-profit psychiatric hospitals are 32% higher than nonprofit psychiatric hospitals and 83% higher than public psychiatric hospitals. The profit motive in healthcare delivery does not mix well with our social responsibility or our humanity. The profoundly mentally ill in this country are vulnerable, they're powerless, and unrepresented. It's a national disgrace. I applaud Dr. Tory's scholarship, consciousness, and courage to tell us clearly what we need to know. We have got to hold state mental health agencies responsible for assertive oversight in how mental health monies are spent. And we must expand the Federal Health Care Fraud Prevention Task Force to deal with crooked institutions and practitioners who are defrauding the system. A goal for the new year. And a goal for ourselves. Remember, we heal better in community. Get connected to others. Help you deal with what you got and what you need. For those of you who are interested in how to heal in community, the Clowntown Healing Fest is taking place in seven weeks in Phoenix, Arizona. Look it up at clowntownhealingfest.org. Wishing you a great week, a very happy new year. I say this for all my relations. Mitakuyasi. <laughs>